morning, everyone. I don't know why, but I feel heavy today with the Holy Spirit. And those words in that last song really touched me when it said, healing will happen in this room. Miracles will happen when we move, right? What does that mean? It means when we move, when we accept God, when we accept Jesus, then He can come into our lives and do wonders. But it's us taking that step. It's us accepting Jesus and wanting that. I just want to... I want to do another applause for our worship team because they're killing it. They're so good. So. All right, I would like to pray to start this. Father, I pray that you're here with us and I pray you bless this message to everyone that hears it. I pray that you bless everyone that needs it, everyone that's at their home and listening in. I just thank you for them. I thank you for them wanting to get to know you and I pray this is a blessing for them. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, amen. How many of you guys are looking forward to Easter and all the little traditions it brings? Yeah, I am too. I got two new boys, so this Easter will be extra fun. But my question is, how many of you guys have thought about Barabbas on Easter? Probably none of you guys. Well, I want to shine a spotlight on Barabbas and his role on Passover. So let me set the stage. Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane praying when the Roman soldiers took him into custody for trial. At this time, Pontius Pilate was in control of the Jews. The Jews did not like him, and he had no love for them either. The Jews were known to be a hard, unruly type of people to handle, and because of this, Pilate's job was in, in question. Because of all the uprisings and riots and all the problems he had, he's having problems with, this, with the Jews. He's had many of them beaten and killed to try to suppress their anger and frustration. And at this point, he's trying to show the Roman emperor that he's fit for this job. So the last thing he needs is a riot. Then comes the case of Jesus Christ. Into his hands, right? Pilate can see that Jesus is a just, innocent man. So why did they bring him in? They brought him in because of blasphemy. Because he said he was the king of the Jews. Which he is. The trial for Jesus is taking place during the Jewish festival of Passover. And why is that significant? Because Easter is the equivalent to Passover for us. Um, this is one highly intense case that Pilate doesn't want anything to do with right now. The last thing he needs is more trouble and to lose his job. In fact, in Matthew 27, 15, 16, his wife, during the trial, sends a message to Pilate saying that she was troubled by a dream. Saying, whatever you do, do not harm that innocent man. Now think about this. She didn't know Jesus. That shows the supernatural ability that God has to be able to send these messages to Pilate. To say, don't touch this man. Don't hurt him. I'm, he didn't listen. And he probably slept in the doghouse that night. <laughs> So he has this problem in his hands. He has Jesus. The, the Jews want to crucify him. His wife is saying, don't touch him. Pilate knows he's an innocent man. So what does he do? He has a problem. He remembers that there's a custom. Every year on Passover, they would release a prisoner to the Jews of their choosing to the crowd. And so he thought, well, I'll, I'll do this. I'll bring out the worst prisoner I have. He was a notorious sinner named Barabbas. He was a rebel. He was a murderer. He was a liar. He said, I'll bring him out. I'll set him to sit right beside Jesus and I'll show him to the whole crowd and let them pick who do I release and who gets crucified. Okay, so they have a choice. Jesus thinking this is a no-brainer. Of course they're going to let Jesus go, the innocent man, and they're going to crucify the man that deserves to die, right? Everything he was charged with, he was guilty of. So let me read it from the Bible. So Pilate asked again, which of these two do you want me to release to you? The crowd shouted back, Barabbas. Pilate responded, then what should I do with Jesus, who is called the Messiah? They shouted back, crucify him. Why, Pilate demanded, what crime has he committed? But the mob roared even louder, crucify him. Pilate saw that he wasn't getting anywhere and that a riot was developing. So he sent for a bowl of water and washed his hands. And before the crowd, he said, I'm innocent of this man's blood. The responsibility is yours. 
Because he knows. He doesn't want to kill this man. He doesn't want to crucify this man. He knows he's innocent. But he has a problem. If he says no to the, the crowd, they're going to have an uprising. They're going to have a riot. And he could lose his job. So he gives in to peer pressure. He gives in to the crowd yelling to crucify this man. Even though he knows it's wrong, he does it anyways, right? So, and the people, he said, after he washed his hands, the people yelled back, we will take responsibility for his death. We and our children. So Pilate released Barabbas to them, and he ordered Jesus to be flogged, and then turned him over to the Roman soldiers to be crucified. Now, if you guys know me, you know I love the intricacies of the Bible. I love when the Old Testament and the New Testament intertwine. And it shows the supernatural ability of the Bible. That it sets it apart from any other Bible. Any other book, right? In the Old Testament, there's this tradition that the Jews would do every year. Every year on a, the, uh, the, year of, the Day of Atonement, they would bring two goats out. They would have two goats right in the front, right? And they would show them to the crowd. One would become the scapegoat. And one would become the Lord's goat. They would release one to set free. And the other one would take, be sacrificed for the sins of the people, right? Does that not show the intricacy of the Bible, the Old Testament to the New Testament? That the same thing that these Jews, if they had their eyes open and they knew what was going on, they would have saw the Old Testament revealing itself right in front of them. They have Jesus, the innocent man, that is going to take the sins of the people to be sacrificed. And then you have Barabbas. The murderer, the thief, the, the, the guy that doesn't deserve what he's give, getting, right? He gets to walk away free. So this, this story, I, it was important to me. Because in case we ever forget that we escaped our own justified death sentence for sin, we have this story to remind us. That Jesus took our place and let the guilty go free. Amen. So Romans 5.8 But God demonstrates His own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. I have a video that goes along with this message. And I'd like for you guys to take a minute and let it speak to you. Let it soak in. It's for everyone here. And I think it really will bless you. And like the, like the song said... Miracles can happen if we let it, if we move, if we accept it. We see the story of Jesus going to the cross and everything seems to kind of be hand in hand. And then there's this one character that seems to interrupt the narrative. His name's Barabbas. We don't even know much about him except that he's a murderer, a leader of an insurrection, a rebel. And why he's even mentioned, sometimes I'm not so sure. It's like, what? Let's, this is about Jesus going to the cross. So in this moment, Pilate thinks, I hold the destinies of these two men in my hand. I know the Jews have a tradition that on a holy day, I will release one of the prisoners on death row. Pilate stands on this audacious stage who now presents Jesus, son of the living God, versus Barabbas, the thug and rebel. He says, all right, who do you want? This is blasphemy. This is, this has gone too far. There's no comparison. This is a rightful prisoner, a man who should be on death row. He's a rebel against Rome. He leads a rebellion. He murders people. He's a bad man. He's a thug and he's a crook. He deserves the chains and he deserves the crucifixion. Jesus, what has he done but heal, restore, deliver, set free, open blind eyes, open deaf ears, heal the lame and the leper? What, what has Jesus done? Who do you want? We want Barabbas. Yeah. Give us Barabbas. People say, give us Barabbas. The Roman soldiers come up and they put the key in and they unlock Barabbas from his chains and shackles. And he walks down the 
platform welcomed by all of his thug friends yeah the people love me yeah that's right i don't even know who this jesus guy is but all i know is my people love me there seems to be no conscience in barabbas there's no record of him turning to jesus and saying i owe you everything now for you have set me free no i don't see any of that in barabbas and god knew that Jesus stood there, silent, for he knew the will of the Father. He said, it's fine, Father. Let him have Barabbas. For Jesus knew that the Father would have to treat Jesus like Barabbas, so he could treat Barabbas like Jesus. Barabbas thought it was the people that set him free. No, 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 no. It was the love of the Heavenly Father. church games we can pretend like some people are better than others and that's why they're blessed or we can all come to the honest conclusion that it's God and it's God alone the greatest challenge is not your discipline your devotion your focus your greatest challenge is believe in the gospel could it be that there's a God with a love so scandalous so wide so deep so vast so high so expansive, so well 
welcoming, so inclusive. Let me have your sin, son. Okay. And I give him my sin. And I stand in this empty space of forgiveness and acceptance while Jesus walks off to the cross that I deserve. I see him, I see him walking to the post to be whipped. As I stand a free man, all the attention is turned now. And I feel the love of God saying, go son, live your life. I'll pay the price. Where did we get off thinking that we were gonna set ourselves free? It's still Jesus. It'll always be Jesus. It'll never stop being the power of Jesus. If His blood is sufficient for your salvation, His blood is sufficient to sustain you through every challenge and every sin and every temptation. Jesus is enough! So how are we Barabbas? The Bible says our heart is wicked and seeking evil at all times. It says we are a sinner in God's eyes, rebelling from the commands. We are no better than Barabbas. Even though Barabbas did heinous, horrible things, we are no better than him in God's eyes. We all need Jesus. We all need to run towards Jesus. Jesus was the one that walked to that cross and was crucified when we should have been. He didn't die for just Barabbas. He died for all of us. And He loves every single one of you guys. And He wants you to take that step today to say that you love God and to show that you love God. So I'm going to invite the prayer team up here.